So really, I just want to um, get, talk about scripting. I'm going to probably go more into scripting than I do storyboarding, because as you'll see, scripting is the foundation of everything that we do. And in many cases, a script can be your text based storyboard. So when I was talking about scripting being your foundation, if you were to look at this pyramid, you'd see, of course, um, it starts with your analysis, right? Like, is training needed? What kind? And then say you already determined, yes, training is needed. I know that it's going to be an e-learning. Well, what kind of idea and conceptualization, conceptualization are you going to have, right? So who are your learners? What are you going to teach them? What are they going to be able to do by the end of the course, right? That's really kind of your starting place. But as far as the whole design goes, well, where does that come from? That comes from your actual script, right? And so how are you going to structure your design? Um, what are you going to write? What story are you going to tell? And I want you to start thinking about different things when you're writing your scripts, right? Of course, you're going to think about activities and your learning objectives and your um, performance objectives and things like that. But I want you to think about how can you write your scripts more simply? And how can you write scripts that are conversational and visual in nature, right? Because any type of online format, whether that's video, animations, or e-learning, you'll need to think about your script visually. And I'll get into more of that later. And then after your script, then you can go on to the storyboard. And of course, storyboards are only for e-learning and video. And in many cases, if you are both the designer and the developer for the for the e-learning or the animation, then you could skip a storyboard. But it is important to know how to storyboard for any type of instructional design role where you are not the developer, right? And also it is an important skill to have as an instructional designer, right? And then of course the learning that's built on top of the script and the storyboard and that is the actual development of your course. So like I said, it, it really does start with those ideas and the conceptualizations of your course. So what is the concept? Who's your audience? And what do you want them to be able to do? You can't start your script unless you at least know the answers to this question, right? So once you have the answers to these questions, then you can move into your scripting phase, right? Once you know what those performance objectives are, and you've probably remember seeing something like this. Remember when I said, create a mini course blueprint, right? This was your ideation phase. This is you getting out the terminal learning objectives, right? What is that end goal? What is that whole problem? If you've seen the um, lesson I recommended to you last week, which was how to design a course, then you'll, um, and you went and you watched that, you'll remember that you are designing courses around complex tasks or whole problems. And it'll build up into um, those complex tasks and whole problems that learners can do on their own. You have to break it down into those component skills and make sure that they can solve the pieces of the problem and then they can solve the whole problem, right? And so that's the same kind of thing here, right? You are thinking about what's that end goal, what's that end thing that they should be able to do and what are those enabling learning objectives? And it's even at this place that you start to thinking about your content ideas, right? And you're designing like a hero. Well, after you get all these ideas out, you know what the types of formats are that you're going to develop your course into, right? And if you're going to develop your course into an e-learning or any parts of it are going to include video, you're going to need a script. And so um, this could be seen as your outline. This can be seen as your ideation phase. Um, but we'll just assume that your outline and your ideas, that's, that's all started here, maybe with this mini course blueprint, or maybe you just get a Google Doc out and write an outline. Okay, so whatever your way of getting it done, totally fine. But I just wanted to kind of bring it all together. So this is your idea phase. This is where you determine what kind of mediums you're going to use. And like I said, if you're going to do e-learning or videos, you're going to need scripts. It also helps with instructor-led 
uh, learning to have a script, uh, but you have a little more flexibility there. And I also encourage you to write scripts in the academy, right? Because a script can be can be reused. You can reuse pieces of a script to make just one animated video. You can use pieces of a full script to uh, just make one type of interaction in your e-learning course. You can use your script to uh, develop a RISE course and, uh, and all those other tiny little things um, that you wanna fill up your portfolio with to demonstrate your skills. That's why, um, I'll, another reason why I encourage you at the very beginning and do it messy to write a full script. All right, so since scripts are the foundation of your development of e-learning, we'll just stick with that and I'll just know that I'm also talking about videos, okay? Then um, there are a couple of different structures that I wanna point out to you. Obviously there's a hundred different structures probably um, that you can learn from other script writers, but there's usually three different categories that script stru structures can fall into. And so I'm gonna show you the three basic ones. And if you want to go and expand your skills outside of those, by all means, this is like the freshman level class, okay? So I'm just gonna give you three structures that work really well and can just help you wrap your mind around writing your script. And I hope for a lot of you that you think like, oh yeah, no doubt. Why did I struggle so hard with script writing? When I show you these three structures, you're gonna be like, oh, I know how to do this. I don't know why um, it, it seemed like such a roadblock for me. So one of the basic script structures, um, I've seen this called a fish um, or, you know, like the introduction, the body and the tail or the call to action. Or, and uh, there's a couple other things that you um, you can call, but it's pretty basic, right? You got to get their attention, give them a hook, ask them a, a question that piques their curiosity. Um, that could be your hook, uh, you know, just like in uh, scripting for instructional videos, uh, Dr. Nicole Papiano, she also talks about the hooks and getting those uh, people engaged. And the second part is your introduction, right? And your hook can be a part of your introduction. So it could really just be three parts to your structure. Uh, but I, I put the hook out as its own part of the structure just so that you remember that you definitely want to capture their attention from the beginning. And then your introduction, right? Just give those viewers or those learners a little bit of a lead in, um, into why the topic you're covering is so important to them. Right. And so you tease a little bit about what you're covering, but mostly it's the what's in it for them that you're giving in that introduction. And then the body. Right. And that's the main section of your script. And especially in e-learning and videos, if you can make the body of your script a story, all the better. Right. Because it's better to illustrate, animate and visualize a story than it is a series of bullet points about that are factual things, right? It's better to, to see a story. It's better to um, visualize a story. And then the last thing is a call to action. Now this formula may look familiar to you if, or if, all, if you're at all familiar with um, marketing, because this is also how people write marketing scripts for videos and things like that. Same kind of thing, same kind of thing for learning scripts. Now your call to action will probably be different. Maybe it might be um, go to the next lesson. Or if you are um, doing a scenario script, right? You've got a hook, an introduction, you tell a story. Then your next call to action would be, how did Bobby's uh, decisions make you feel? If you were Bobby, what would you have done different? and you give them options, right? So your call to action in an e-learning course at the end of your script might be different than what it is in marketing videos, obviously, right? But you can see how, if you can just think about it simply, hook, intro, story, what are they gonna do next? Are they, gonna just, are they just gonna go to the next slide and answer some questions? Or are they just gonna go to the next lesson? Do you want them to download a resource? after that video? Do you want them to um, answer some questions in their journal? What is it that you want them to do? That's the end of your script. Now, I also want to make it clear that you can have several small scripts in one e-learning course, right? Because maybe you have, uh, you know, a intro 
uh, a script just for the introduction of your course, maybe have another script for uh, a main uh, scenario that comes after that in your course, and then you have another call to action. Uh, maybe you have another uh, scenario, or may maybe you have another script that um, covers another topic or another part of your lesson, and then that's another smaller script. But you can, you see what I say, I'm saying here, right? It's the structure. You'd still follow the same structure for each of those tiny scripts that are part of your larger script. So let's give an example. Um, I apologize that it is a little small to read, so I will um, go ahead and show this to you. So this is just kind of some ideas right here on the page. This is the start of a script, right? And um, it ha as you can see, it'll ha it has a clear intro, a story, and a call to action. And so here's the example. So this example is about that DISC profile, that personality test that so many companies make you take. And so here's the introduction. DISC is a tool we use to discuss our colleagues' behavioral differences. Each letter D-I-S-C represents a personality type and knowing who's what will make us work better together. And so you, this is just kind of the brainstorming part of this script and you can finesse it later, but I just want to show you how easy it is to write in this structure. And then here's the story. Here's Doug. He just answered a DISC questionnaire and got the result of being a D. D stands for dominance, and Doug agrees that he matches the D behaviors of accepting challenges, trying to see the big picture, and maybe being a bit blunt sometimes. His colleague Inez took the DISC test and found out that she's more of an I type. Inez knew that she values influence, relationships, and openness, but she didn't know that DISC could put a label on it. Interesting. As more and more colleagues answer the questions, they see how their team is distributed across the DISC. It becomes very clear that we're all different, think differently, and understand the same messages in very different ways. It's actually fun to use the categories and letters to become more self-aware. A lot of descriptions ring true and open up for good dis discussions on conflict management, leadership style, and teamwork. And then here's the call to action. Now that you know about the basic purpose of DISC, you're ready to go to the next chapter of this training where we dive into each of the DISC letters. See, this is one script for just the opening of a DISC training. And you see how we use this and then a call to action, right? See you in the next lesson. Go to the next lesson, right? You can just use a, next, a, a simple call to action. You have a framework, you just plug it in, smooth it out. And I'm gonna give you a couple of tips for your script writing to help make sure that this, that your little script flows well. So um, you're just gonna swiftly introduce the overall context of the, the course or the video or whatever it is that you're writing a script for, dive into a story that exemplifies your introduction, and then you round it off with, with a wrap up and concrete call to action, whatever that is for your learner's next step. There is a, another, format and it's called the before and after or the better world scripts. And so sometimes it is easier to get your message across if you contrast um, what it is or what it is that your course offers, right? Um, with something that people already know and understand. So comparing what you have to what already exists is the foundation of this better world script. And so it actually has two components. Right? You paint a picture of a current situation that is unpleasant or inconvenient. Hence the reason I show like this like you know polluted industry factory. We'll just say it's like dirty energy, right? Um, and and then of course you propose whatever it is that is the solution of a better world. So this before and after dynamic is very common. Um, it might even be a cliche that you've probably seen many different places, including commercials or ads or whatever, but it works for internal training as well. So let's look at an example for this one also. So just so you know, um, OKRs are objectives and key results, right? So here's the sad world of the, of the script. In our beloved company, we've grown a lot over the past year. Growth is amazing, but growth comes with increasing complexity. We have seen projects go slower than they used to. People express a confusion about which way to run. And sadly, 
We've seen a record high number of good colleagues leaving us the past year. We want to keep growing, but we need to do it the right way. And then comes the better world. Therefore, we're introducing a new framework for a company called OKRs, right? You'd probably actually spell it out. Objectives and key results. OKRs is to be our new and improved way to keep projects on track, create a clear sense of direction for all teams, and make sure we build a sound company going forward. And then we say, OKRs are developed by Google and tested by thousands of startups. It's the perfect fit for our company's size and stage. Over the next couple of weeks, we're going to host workshops on OKRs, and we really hope you'll bring a lot of energy and positivity to, to these sessions. See you there. See, so there's still a call to action at the end. And really, this script is just kind of to tease people or part, maybe part of your rollout um, before you start the series of workshops of training around these um, objectives and key results that are being rolled out into your company and how they're going to use them and all those kinds of things. But here you can see um, another script structure that you could use. And I've given you an example of how it can be used. Another um, example um, that I've used before and after is like when a company goes from one software platform to another, like I remember in the recruiting and staffing um, company that I worked for, I created a video of what their applicant tracking system used to be, why it didn't work and all, all those frustrations that they have to a better world. We're moving to Bullhorn, which will enable us to blah, 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 blah. Right, same kind of thing. Um, sad world to a better world. So Hillary asks, how strict should you stick to your script? Sometimes even a well-written script sounds robotic. So that's the thing. And I'm going to talk about that, Hillary. Um, if you read your script out loud and it sounds robotic, then you'll need to adjust your script. You want to read your scripts out loud. You want to make sure that even if you're hiring uh, a voiceover artist or narrator that you've read through it out loud yourself first before you ever hand it over to anybody else to record. You want to make sure that it sounds friendly, conversational. It, and I, I now I'm kind of getting into my scripting tips, right? And I'll go over more of those in just a moment. But if it sounds uh, robotic, then it's not well written is what I would say. <laughs> and so you do want to make sure that you um, simplify, simplify, keep it conversational, keep it um, at a ninth grade reading level or below, and you really want to stick to those aha moments uh, for your learners. Good question. All right. Now there's one more script format, and this is the last one that I'm gonna show you. Um, Cause like I said, I just wanna keep it real simple for you. So, so far we've seen two different templates, right? And then those other two, Storytelling is key, right? You want to keep a story in that body of the, you know, three or four step four framework. And in the sad world versus better world, you can see obviously there's a story there. But this one, the USPs or the unique selling points, or it's also called a unique selling proposition. Um, for this one, it's more about, it's less about story and more about concrete facts, information. Maybe uh, if you're teaching um, for teaching salespeople about features and benefits, like the benefits of products, maybe you would use this format for your script, right? And so it's it's more about highlighting whatever that product or service is all about, right? Or like just the facts of whatever your topic is. So it's it's usually um, pretty easy to write, and it's and it's built linearly around a number of your selling points, right? Or whatever is interesting about um, that, those facts or that information or those products or those services. So for instance, say you, say you repair phones, then your main USPs might be something like open seven days a week. If, you, if there's no cure, there's no pay, we have 10 years of experience, then your um, USP script might be something like, we are fictional phone repair, your one-stop shop for fixing your broken phone. Because of our talented team with more than 10 years of experience, we can offer you a cure, no pay guarantee. Oh, we can offer you a no cure, no pay guarantee. Come by with your phone any day of the week and let us give it new life. 
So as you can see, all it was was a series of selling points that you can just have a brainstorm of what those are, and then you can write it in an easy, straightforward, um, compelling way. Got another example for you. So here's another one. Here's another straight to the point script where, um, you know, just those stories are not important. And so you'll see that I, you can take a screenshot because maybe it's a lot for um, me to read to you, but so it's just a uh, bullets. Acme Corp just released a new pipeline management system for the salespeople. And these are some of the highlights of the product. And then here are some of the highlights. And then you see at the end, even though that it's just a list of uh, unique selling points, um, it says jump into your new dashboard and take a little look around today. So you tell them where it's located and they can go look around and you've sold them on it. So sometimes um, we do create uh, videos just to inform people of where things are located and um, how to find them. It, it happens. And so this could be an easy way for you to just say, hey, we have you know a new platform that does this, 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 and this. Log in your dashboard and take a look. All right, so let me get into those scripting tips that I have mentioned that I just kind of covered a little bit when I was answering Hillary's question. And my first one is simplify, 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 right? You wanna keep your content as simple as possible. So feel free to write like you talk and cut out all of the fluff, all of those filler words, all of the you know um, college words as they call them or the 50 cent words, you wanna cut that stuff out um, because it's not hard to ramble on about all the facts and information. But as you know, information is not instruction. And also if you were to do that, it's boring, right? We're not looking to bore our learners, we're looking to engage them and help them learn. And so it is hard to boil something complex down to something simple. And so really um, part of your job when writing your script is to find the key messages your learner will connect with and understand. So you, you might, um, it's definitely important to know who your learners are, where they, where they are, what they've been introduced to, what they're familiar, familiar with, because many of your times your learners might be encountering the information that you're putting in front of them for the first time without any prior knowledge, right? And so in that case, simplicity is key. And as you know, as you guys know firsthand, especially right now, learning something new is challenging. And so don't make the content more complex than it needs to be. You wanna make it easily digestible. So I have another example for you. All right here is another script. So, if uh, here's my attention grabber, right? Don't panic. We've worked out how to stop metal spills. There's our attention grabber. Now this is more kind of like uh, an explainer video, okay? So DISA's new melt overflow cover is a simple yet effective way to get more uptime and better and a better bottom line. There's the introductory benefit. Bolt the overflow cover straight onto the sides of your dismatic molding conveyor and it will keep any molten metal where it belongs safely on top of the mold. This is how to install. See how simple we, we've made this when I'm sure that this could be a very complicated thing, you know, if you were to get all, very detailed exactly about how this thing works. Then product benefits. No spills means no more iron coated thrust bars, no damaged equipment, and no more stopping to clean up the mess. All from the simple low cost accessory. Adding a molt overflow cover to your dismatic molding line is done in a matter of hours, not days. For more information, visit and there's your call to action. So I thought this was a great example of keeping it simple, right? Do you wanna have enough information to be interesting and educational? And that's the um, balance you wanna strike. So it's easy to understand, but it has enough information to be interesting and educational. That's where you guys wanna live in your scripts. No matter um, how far down into the content that you're getting, you still want to simplify each piece of your content. And as you can see, um, what kind of uh, format is this one? Do you guys, I've given you three different structures. What do you think this one is?
Yeah. Yeah, it, it follows the USP because it includes the benefits. And it also, as you can see, the USP also follows into the introduction body call to action format. It just has a different, instead of a story, it has um, the benefits included. So good job. The other thing that you wanna think about are aha moments, right? So these are the moments of sudden realization should be your guiding light when trying to find a simple way to explain what you're trying to explain. So you can get these aha moments from your actual learners, right? You can go and talk to them and try to explain it and then see if the light bulb clicks and then try to explain it again and wait for that time when they say, oh, okay, I get it now. Oh, 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 that makes sense. When you hear that, that's when you know that you found the aha moment that you want to structure your script around. Because these moments of sudden realization, those are your guiding light. So you want to think about what is interesting about your course or your topic. And so I have a little exercise for us. So for instance, if we we're going to practice, right, like what is the iPod, right? So you might be thinking about this for your content. Right. So whatever your content is, think about it right now. And you'll be like, what is uh, backpacking in the wilderness or uh, what is difficult conversations or whatever. Right. So what is the iPod? So your first try might look something like this. The iPod is a new kind of Walkman with more storage space for your music than any other device on the market. Well, this might be what the iPod is, but this is boring. Right. And nothing really to grab onto and keep as a core understanding of what the iPod really is. So you'll want to try again. This is a, a practice that you can go through for your own, own course topic. So write down your first answer, then try again. The iPod is a new generation of music player that can store all your albums and songs on one device. That's better. But what if you did it one more time? The iPod is a thousand songs in your pocket. Now, this is the kind of level of aha moment that you really want to go to because this can bring aha moments to your learners, right? That's when they'll be like, oh, you know, I get it now. That's so cool, right? Have you heard about this new thing on iPod? I mean, obviously it's not new, right? It's like a thousand songs in your pocket. And so you want to kind of think about that for your course, your topic, and whatever you are trying to illustrate in your script. And this is the point that you want your viewer to get to. And um, as a matter of fact, this one, the iPod is a thousand songs in your pocket. This actually was the one Steve Jobs used um, when Apple launched the iPod back in 2001. And of course, what did it help the audience do? It helped them instantly understand the benefits and the value of the iPod. So especially in those introductions uh, to your e-learning, you want them to instantly understand what's in it for them, or what is this course about? Or why do they need to learn this? And that kind of thing. And so if you can get it to the iPod is a thousand songs in your pocket type of aha moment, then you are creating a very strong script. So, um, and many times you might run into, especially as, you know, instructional designers, you may run into stakeholders who, or subject matter experts who may worry that, that this is not explaining it well enough, right? That you're not getting all the details by saying the iPod is a thousand songs in your pocket. It'd be like, because you don't say what the machine is, you don't say how the machine works or um, how they're going to put it in their ears or any of that kind of stuff, right? Um, but instead, you want to save those details for later. You want to include them later. And so really, this is more about you want to get your aha moment um, for that introductory script. You want to grab attention first, and then you move on to that heavier information later after you've gotten their buy-in. Yeah. So Mo says, um, I want to put a ding in the universe, and that he's quoting Steve Jobs. And he says, think about um, that people... Think about it that people are purpose maximizers and we need to always offer them the purpose. Yeah, I like that. The why. Exactly. That's exactly how you get people hooked on your mess message is the why. And if you can make it something that makes it real clear for them. All right. So my slides, just FYI, are a little janky. I 
seriously put this together today because I saw so many questions about storyboards and scripting. That I was like, I this is what I'm going to put aside what I originally thought I was going to train you guys on today and did this. So um, just FYI on these like crazy slides. All right. So um, think visually. So we want to write the script with our visuals in mind. And so what I mean is, is that we aren't writing articles, right? Unless you are actually writing articles, then you're not writing scripts, right? You're writing articles where you are writing a video or an e-learning script. And so you want to think about how the text will suggest your visualizations. So how can we, how does what we say allow us to visualize what is said? And so how can we describe things in a way that makes it easier to support with um, animations, um, the graphics on the screen, you know, the visuals. And so the easiest way, obviously, is to tell a story, right? Because a story, it, it just enables visuals, right? Like Joe was walking down the street. I can already imagine the little Beyond character walking down the street, right? You don't want to say... John left his office to walk down the street. He saw a dog. He, you know, like you don't want to put all that stuff in there. You just want to get to the point. You want to make it visual. So John was walking down the street. He went to a Mexican restaurant. You can show him inside the Mexican restaurant, right? You want to tell something um, that's a clear direction for what you want to show. So maybe you would say something like, Here's John. John loves to work out at the gym with his friends, but lately um, they haven't been able to get together because of the coronavirus. So all the visuals for a script like this might be a man who that's John, a gym with some people, John and his friends, a closed gym. He shows a, a sad John. Um, and, and, and that's your, that's how you're thinking visually. And so the point is that it, there's a clear connection between what is said and what is shown. And that's really what you want to accomplish in your scripts. But it's not always easy, right? Especially if there's no story. So if you don't tell a story, then you may have some difficulties in visualizing those generic sentences. Obviously, it's possible to do um, like some conceptual scenes. You could use text, symbols, and icons. But really, well, I just want to encourage you not to write out everything. Um, Instead, you want to write your script in a way that it suggests a certain visual universe around it. So, for example, let's see. Um, if you're too detailed in your, um, in your script, you overtake the visual side. So here's an example. So after work, John and his friends eat at the local Mexican diner. That is pretty easy. You can just, I'm, I'm always thinking in beyond visuals um, just because that's the animation program I've used forever. And so I could imagine like John sitting in the restaurant with his, with his friends at a, it's a Mexican diner, right? And you can show that through the backgrounds and the scenes and you could show them eating and all that kind of stuff. However, if you do after work, John and his friends leave the office and walk down the street to eat at the local Mexican restaurant. Well, now you have to show all those things, right? And you've extended um, what you're showing on the screen when if you write simply and you think about the visuals, then it's much better to just write, John and his friends eat a local Mexican dinner after work. All right, so what does this actually look like in your scripting? So here's just another way to write a script. I just took a screenshot of one of the tables that I've used. You write the script on one side. You could say, I call it this the say part, or you could write this the script part. And then what are you going to show? And then because usually we are also writing scripts for e-learning, maybe you have them do something in the course, right? So say, show, and do. And so I might say, welcome to the script template. And then what am I going to show? Welcome screen with text on colored background. This is your tool to create e-learning video scripts. What am I going to show? Maybe I'd show a split screen to show e-learning on one side and animations on the other side. Download this template to get started. So then maybe I'd show a screen recording showing how to download the template. Right? And so <laughs> Eileen, you're funny. Um, Eileen knows we're, uh, we're like neighbors and she said, uh, Los Bravos on Trickum. That is a very, uh, I love that restaurant. They've got great ceviche, Eileen. <laughs> 
And then of course, then like the do, right? So then I'll actually need to um, attach the template to the resources in the course. And so this is what I'd call a text storyboard or your script, right? Either way, whatever you want to call it, this is what that looks like or could look like. And I'm about to show you a bunch of different storyboards and what they can look like. And then lastly, I, my last tip for you, and then I've already said it, but um, it's just to keep your, your um, language casual, like you're talking to a friend, right? You want to use second person point of view um, and keep your language below ninth grade reading level. That's so that it's clear, that makes, that forces you to be really clear with your language. And also it's inviting for your learners to hear a conversational tone, right? So like you're talking to them.